Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and today we are going to create this picture fly through animation in After Effects. You can use it as a slideshow for your sweet memories or you can use it as an intro for your channel. All this only using After Effects. So let's begin. Alright, so right now I'm in After Effects and you can see that I've already imported a couple of images. So I'm going to use these ones. So you can just import whatever images you have and you are ready to go. Now let's begin by creating a new composition. So go to composition, new comp and let's call this one main. Width and height will be 1920 by 1080, frame rate 30 FPS and duration you can pick whatever you want. Also make sure that you are using the classic 3D render. In case you are using this Cinema 4D, just switch it to classic 3D. After that, just click on OK. Now we are going to create another composition for our frame. So let's call this one frame one. And for width, I'm going to set this to 400 height. Let's set this to 600 and rest of the things will remain same. Just click on OK. Now open up the frame comp and we are going to just simply double click on this shape. Make sure that you are inside the composition. So double click on this shape tool so that it will create a shape which fills the composition now i'm going to select this tool and we are going to create another square so for that hold down the shift key just click and drag now it will create a square something like this now we can place it into the center so using the align panel and in case you are not able to see the align panel then you can go to windows and from here you can enable it now we are going to make a cutout from this shape. So in order to do that, we are going to use this track mat option. Now, in case you are using the older version of After Effects, then you won't have these drop down. Instead, you will have track mat, alpha mat, alpha inverted, something like that. So just select the bottom layer and set it to alpha inverted. But if you are using the newer versions, then you can just pick whip, select this one. And we don't want this. We actually want the opposite thing. So I'm going to just click over here. So now you can see that we are able to see this cutout. Now we can probably select this cutout. Now, if you want to play with the size, then you can do that. Now I'm going to make this little bit taller, something like that. Let's make it a little bit wider, just like that. Now you can select this and we can position it so that it looks like a frame. Let's increase its size, something like that. Yeah, I think this is looking fine. Now we are done with our frame and we have five pictures over here. So I'm going to create five copies. So for that, I'm going to select this and press Ctrl D and let's duplicate it five times so that we can fit each image into these. So let's pick any of these image and let's drag it over here. Let's place it below of all of these. Now we can probably scale this down because it's quite big and let's scale this down. Now you can play around with its position however you want. So I think this looks fine. Let's open up the second comp and I'm going to just import this image. Again, let's press S and these are quite big. So I'm going to just scale them down. Just place it however you want. Let's open up the third one and just keep on doing this and replace place all the images that you have inside these comps. So now we are done with the images. Now let's go back to the main composition and we are going to create a new solid. So right click new and I'm going to create a solid. So for color, you can pick whatever color you want. I'm going to just leave it to black for now. Just click on OK. Now we're going to drag all of these frames into our scene, something like that. Now I'm going to select all of these layers and let's make them 3D by clicking over here. Now in case you are not able to see these, then you can just simply click on these icons to make them visible, something like that. Now we can select the solid and we are going to apply a gradient effect to this. So let's search for gradient ramp and let's drag it over here. Now I'm going to switch this to radial and let's place it in the center and I'm going to place it over here. Now you can make this layer 3D as well, but if you don't want, then you can just leave it as it is. Now I'm going to just switch the colors and we are going to just make this little bit brighter, something like that. Yeah, I think this is looking fine, perfect. So before we proceed, a lot of you watching right now have not subscribed to my channel and I want you to please do that because I want to hit 100k subscriber this year on my channel. So make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon. So let's continue. So once you're done with this, we can create a new camera. So right click new and let's create a camera. So I'm using this 30mm, 50mm focal length. Just click on OK. Let's create a new null object. So right click new null object. Let's make this null object 3D as well. Now I'm going to select the camera and I'm going to parent it with the null so that we can move around. Now I'm going to switch this from one view to two view so that we can have a side by side view. And this is the region which our camera is viewing. And this is where we can see all the 
less from the side view now we can select the null object and you can see that if i press p now we can move around the scene something like this and you can see that our camera is moving here as well so we are going to do a simple z space animation something like this and i'm going to just move the camera forward now we don't want this background to move so i'm going to just uncheck the 3d from here so that we can only focus on these pictures now let's zoom out quite a bit and let's add a keyframe for position now let's go to somewhere around 10 seconds and i'm going to just move my camera quite a bit so let's move this something like that now if you want you can just zoom in from here you can see it has the z space now you can move it along and it's completely up to you you can move it however far you want just like that so now if i play back here you can see we have this camera moving in now we can start arranging these pictures so i'm going to just select the top one here you can see we have these in the 3d viewport now you can just move them in the z space let's select all of them and i'm going to hide them for now let's focus on this one so i'm going to select this and let's press r i'm going to rotate it however you want so let's rotate rotate it little bit now you can just place it however you want in the scene so now if i play back here you can see we have this camera moving around you can see that the picture is passing by now if you think that this is too far then you can just move it closer perfect now let's enable the second picture and i'm going to select this one let's move it further back from the first one something like that now you can move it around so i'm going to place it over here again if you want you can just make them big by pressing s let's move it around press r now we can just rotate it little bit something like that you can just place it however you want i think this is looking perfect now in the same way you can keep on going but before that we want to have little bit of rotation animation to the camera as well so for that i'm going to just move these over here so first let's select the camera and press r now let's add the rotation keyframes so let's add all of them now we can move to somewhere around two seconds and you can see that this picture is closer so i want my camera to turn to this side so you can see that i can rotate it along the y-axis something like that so now you can see that our camera is moving now once it is past that i want it to flip to the other picture so we can just change its angle something like that so here you can see that the camera is moving and it moves to first picture then it goes to second one now if you want you can also rotate the camera onto the other axis something like this but for this one i'm going to stick with only the phi axis now meanwhile you can also place your pictures however you want so that the camera is looking at them fully so now if i play back you can see that it focuses on this first picture then it goes to second one you can see that there is a jitter in between the animation so we can fix that later on but first let's keep on adding pictures now let's enable the third one something like that so here we have the picture now we can just move it along the z space and it's completely up to you you can just place it wherever you want again press r you can add a little bit of rotation something like this so i think this is looking fine again we can just add a keyframe for the rotation so that we can focus on this image just like this so you can see that it is moving and probably we can just make this little bit like that now we can go a little bit more ahead and we can enable the next picture which I have over here let's enable this again let's move it way back in the z space and let's place it somewhere around here press r and i'm going to just rotate it something like that now let's enable the last picture and let's place it far behind as well so let's select this and let's move it into the z space something like that now we might have to move our camera more so in order to do that i'm going to just select the null object and somewhere around here we can just probably move this little bit further something like that now we can adjust the frames let's move it more further something like this now we can select these and let's start adjusting them now we can probably go back to the first view so that we can align the pictures something like this so now if i play back you can see we have this sort of motion and let's fix this quickly by simply arranging the pictures so we have this picture over here we can place it over there let's place it over there now we can start playing with the rotation so if we have this first picture and yeah i think this is looking fine maybe a little bit something like that so we have the second picture and for this one we can just move it a little bit more perfect now we have this third one 
and for this one we can just move it over here now i think that this picture is way too close to this one so we can go back to the second view and you can see that it's this picture and we have these two pictures very close so let's move it way far in the z space something like that now you can play around with its position and let's play around with its position now let's make the camera to look at it so just rotate it along the y-axis maybe we can make this closer something like that now at last we have this picture so you can see that it's completely out of this frame so we can just rotate it something like that now at the end i want this to go out of this camera so we can probably move this keyframe ahead and we can just move it past this picture and let's rotate it a little bit something like that now we can go back to the one view now we can select all of these keyframes and let's press f9 to ease them or you can right click go to keyframe assistant and just click on easy ease now if i play back here you can see we have this animation and you can see that we are moving through these pictures now sometimes you will notice that the pictures are not oriented properly so in that case you can just move them around something like this so here you can see we have this very nice reveal and here you can see we are moving past these pictures this looks perfect something like that now over here we can just add a little bit of more delay and we can just probably move it over here now i don't want all of these pictures to be visible at once i want to focus only on one picture at a time so for that we can add a light so let's go to layer new and let's add a light i'm going to change this from spot to point light and the intensity i'm going to set this to 30 just click on ok so now you can see we have this light and all of these pictures suddenly have gone dark let's go back to the to view mode now i want this light to move with the camera so in order to do that let's select the light and let's place it somewhere we have this camera now let's select this and i'm going to parent it to the camera so let's pick whip and just parent it to the camera now you can see that the light will start moving with the camera something like this now in the beginning we are going to select the light and let's go under the light properties from here i'm going to select the fall off and let's set this to inverse square clamped something like that now you can see that everything goes dark so now if i play back here you can see that our image will start appearing as we go near it but you can see that the intensity is way too low so we can increase this by simply increasing the intensity slider something like that so here you can see we have these pictures going bright as we are passing through them now if you don't like these too bright then you can just lower this down a little bit let's set this to 100 for now and we can fill in more light so let me just quickly go back to one view so in order to add more lights let's go to layer new and this time i'm going to add an ambient light so let's select the ambient one and intensity we can play around later so let's add this so now you can see that all these pictures are a little bit visible and we don't want these highlights so let's lower this down a little bit just like this now you can see that we are able to see one light at a time something like this now if you want to make them even more darker then you can just play around with the intensity of the ambient light so let's go under the light you can see that if i make this less then you can see that all of these images will go dark but if i increase this you can see that all of these will be bright so it's completely up to you, you can play around with these values something like this so here you can see we have these pictures and our camera is flying through them something like that in case you are not able to see the light on some of these then you can just play around with their position something like this and it's quite big so i'm going to just make this smaller just like that now let's place it over here and let's bring it closer as well so that it comes into the light something like that so in this way you can play around with their position and the camera angle and just create a fly through animation something like this now once you're done with this we can add a little bit of depth of field to this as well so in order to do that just go to the camera and let's select and press a8 twice or you can just open up the from here now let's go under we have this depth of field let's enable this now let's go to the very beginning and you can see that now everything is visible so if i increase this aperture value you can see that everything will start blurring now we can just set this to something like 700 
now focus distance is something that you have to play around so you can see that i want this to be visible so we can just play around with the focus so now you can see that it's completely in focus so just play around with the focus distance until you find something that looks good so you can see that the pictures will start coming to focus as they are getting closer something like this but if you don't want this then you can just play around with the focus distance or you can lower down the aperture a little bit to make them less blurry something like this now you can see that as we are passing through these pictures we are getting everything in focus perfect so at last if you want you can add a text at the end just like you added these pictures all you have to do is just select the text tool and just type your text make it 3d and just place it back there so this is how you can create these kind of fly through picture animations. Now again, it's completely up to you. you can play around with these angles. You can play around with the speed of camera, everything. You can select all the keyframes, hold on the alt key and you can just add a little bit of smoothing. Now you can see that we have this very smooth animation and the project files for this tutorial is available on Patreon. So if you are supporting me over there, then you can download it from there. And if you are not, then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project file and exclusive template that are available only on Patreon. So with that being said, my name is Abhishek and I'll see you in the next one.